four. Let's bring in Dan Pickering of Pickering Energy Partners. Dan, good to have you back on. I was actually just in your state and, of course, talking about the, the, the massive, colossal failure of the energy grid. And one of the sort of the takeaways from that was as the biggest power producer in the United States and consumer, Texas is going to need a lot more of everything to make sure that it hap doesn't happen again, whether it's wind turbines or solar. But that might include nat gas as well, maybe even, dare I say, nuclear. What are going to be the knock-on effects of what happened the last two weeks? Yeah, Brian, good to be with you. I think that um, you're right. The knock-on effects are going to be the realization we need all of the above here in Texas and, and in the U.S. Uh, as it relates to, to sources of energy. It can't just be renewables. It's got to be uh, everything. So you said nuclear, oil, natural gas, wind power, solar power. We need, we need it all. It'll be weatherized. It'll be better. But it can't just be one or the other. It's got to be all. Well, yeah, because what we've learned is that when something goes down, something else must pick up the slack. And sadly, like everything else these days, the debate, which could have been intelligent, whatever, just became renewables, fossils, screaming, everybody screaming at each other before we even knew exactly what happened. Well, listen, we all want to drive electric cars, have smartphones with huge data centers and live in warm climates and crank the AC nine months a year. The bottom line is if we want to do that and live in cities, by the way, that are built on concrete and use a lot of energy, we're going to need a lot of everything, are we not? I, I completely agree. I, I felt like saying right on, brother, as you were, as you were talking through that. Um, the world consumes 100 million barrels a day of oil. Uh, we are not going to wean ourselves off of that quickly, but we're going to try, and so that means we need a lot of wind. We need a lot of solar. We need a lot of everything if we want to keep consuming the way we consume. So I think we've got to get away from being in one camp or the other and figure out how we do it in a way that's environmentally friendly, but also economic. We've got to get out of this, this mode of yeah. potentially creating energy poverty for others. It, yeah, and that's we got to remember there's a whole world out there that may not be able to afford a Tesla right now or any car for that matter, and they'd be happy to have one. Very quickly, are, are oil and gas stocks, I mean, some of them are heavily shorted. They've A lot of short covering, Dan. They've gone up 70 or 80 percent in six months. Is there any opportunity left? I think there is. We're, we might be a little ahead of ourselves, a little. You know, we've got an OPEC meeting coming up. Oil's run to 60. Um, we might see it come back into the 50s, and if it does, the stocks could come back some, but but these are going to be doubles, Brian. I mean, oil is going to be 60 or 70 bucks over the next two, three, four years. And, and as that happens, these companies, earnings are going up, cash flows are going up, values are going up. So there's still lots of room left here. Yeah. Dan Pickering, Pickering Energy Partners. Dan, next time I am in Texas. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.